Next on Sunday Square Off, the passing of the torch. He served his country with honor. He fought the good fight. He finished the race. He kept the faith. Just do the right thing. Pick the best possible person, regardless of politics. Senator Kyle is prepared to hit the ground running. The governor asked for my help. And because I'm putting my country first, just as this seat's previous occupant did every single day for more than 30 years. Congratulations, Senator. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Square Off. I'm Bram Resnick. What was Governor Doug Ducey thinking? Two days after Senator John McCain was buried, he appointed former Senator John Kyle to take McCain's seat as a temp only till the end of the year. That's our top story on today's show. We'll also ask whom Ducey has in mind for the seat if Kyle does step down by the end of the year, as looks likely. Plus, we look at the hottest fall races. School Superintendent Diane Douglas's defeat opens the door to a new face at the Department of Education. Then what Arizona's historic voter turnout in this primary means for the fall. And the invest in ed ballot measure is dead. Will the state Supreme Court justices pay for their decision? Joining us this morning on the left, political analyst Chris Hurstam, and on the right, Republican political consultant Chris Baker. Good to see you both. Good morning. So John Kyle's appointment was widely praised, uh, including by John McCain's widow, uh, Cindy McCain. Why did the governor appoint a temp for this job and not someone committed to stay on until the special election in 2020? Chris Baker, I'll go to you. I think it was a safe pick. Uh, governor Ducey's in the middle of an election. He wanted a safe conservative pick that would be as uncontroversial as possible. But he's got to make another appointment in 2018, late 2018, 2019, depending on whether he wins the race. Doesn't this throw so many things oh, up in the air? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, I've known John Kyle for 35 years. He's a wonderful guy, brilliant. Um, but this was, this is a bad appointment. I mean, why? Because we've, we had just watched the unbelievable funeral and memorials regarding John McCain. It's his seat. It's who the voters voted for. The John McCain legacy is critical to maintain as much as possible. Uh, I agree with the gubernatorial candidate David Garcia, who said very <coughs> bluntly, I would offer it to Cindy McCain. And if Cindy McCain didn't want it, I'd give it to Grant Woods, who we know would want it. Those were the two Republicans that would maintain the McCain legacy. This was to placate Donald Trump, to keep the right wing <laughs> element of, of the party happy. Uh, he's there for one reason. As you said, he's a temp. Kyle is there for one reason, to vote for Kavanaugh. That's, that's what's consumed well, <laughs> Donald Trump. It gets that job done. And then, okay. as you said, I agree, it's a safe pick with regards to the media. They'll fawn all over the former uh, U.S. senator. But to give it to him, and he doesn't even agree to serve more than yeah, a few months, know, is preposterous. Was, I'm polite, so I wasn't going to interrupt there. But I think you're selling Senator Kyle short. I mean, when you, when you break it all down, he is the most qualified person for the seat right now. And the reality is, it is not about, it's not McCain's seat, it's Arizona's seat. And Governor Ducey picked the person that is probably most qualified, most ready to hit the ground running. And overall, it was a good pick. It's a temporary uh, okay, pick, but he, it's a good what's pick. He, what's he going to do for the next month? The, the, okay, and that's, that's my question. Because he's only, Senate's only in session about three, there. four weeks. But that's not, but that's not good. He that's not Ducey's Sherpa. problem. I mean, he that's was not. Donald <laughs> Trump's coach for John Kyle, led him around. I don't all, know that he was. And now, I, we, I just, now I, we can step <laughs> in. And vote for the guy. It's it's a bizarre lobbyist. But would any Republican there. not vote for him? Let's put it that way. Uh, that's, so that's that's that's, 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 that's a red that's, herring. That's, yeah, that's a red Grant, herring. Grant Woods may may not have voted for him. And that that's is what, the, Grant Woods which is why really he would never have gotten the seat. Yeah, <laughs> he's not really a Republican. Yeah, which, which, which is why you, which is why Doug Ducey <laughs> had the opportunity to pick a Trump Republican. Oh come or, on, John Kyle's or, not a Trump yes, Republican. Yes, a Trump Republican <laughs> who was that's a slam dunk for Kavanaugh. That is insane. John Kyle has never been Kavanaugh. Okay. A Trump or Republican. A That's nuts. Republican. Okay, let's get off. Let's get with Trump. Okay, let's get off Mount Everest here <laughs> for a second. Come back down to Washington D.C. He's only going to be Senate's only going to be in session three, four weeks. Correct. Is there a chance, though, if Democrats take the House, 
there could be a vote by a lame duck Congress on killing Obamacare. Sure. Where Kyle might have to cast a vote. That's true. Very much true. Um, he might have to cast a vote. And look. And you know, he would vote to, to do away with Obamacare. Okay. <laughs> and John <laughs> Kyle, I mean, excuse me, John McCain's already voted on that issue. That The McCain legacy would be lost. Of course, John again. Kyle would but vote that's, but that's, on Obamacare. But that's what, that's what the governor wants. But once again, yeah. it's not even a question right. what the governor wants. It's a conservative state. It's not, I mean, I, look, tremendous amount of respect for John McCain, but it's not John McCain's seat. See, he, it's well, Arizona's seat. What we have here, and Chris is, is, is representing that side, we have just what I said earlier. It was a choice between maintaining the John McCain anti-Obamacare vote or uh, looking oh, at I issues think, differently no. or a slam dunk for Donald Trump. And John I, Kyle, but, I, went, think, I, think okay, okay, I, think, I think we've litigated this okay. uh, as I mean, far as we're gonna on, go. Calling, who, who, okay, who's on the short list? to take over for Kyle and you know hold the seat until the 2020 general election or special election. There's two people on the short list. If if McSally loses the Senate race to Cinema, um, and I hope she does, um, she could easily turn right around and appoint McSally to the Senate seat, which is McSally. bizarre. Or or if he loses if Ducey loses to Garcia, as I hope he does, he could appoint himself to the U.S. He said Senate over and over he's not going to do oh, yeah. that. They so say that, that be... because he thinks okay. he's going to be governor. Chris, if he loses, number one, I don't think oh. it'll be Martha McSally. I do think McSally will win in November, but I don't think, even if she were to lose, that she would be appointed to the seat. Um, look, for all being honest, it's completely up in the air. Anyone who tells you who is going to be the next appointment is speculating. Purely speculative. Ducey's chief, chief of staff, Kirk Adams, getting a lot of He's, publicity. Kirk's, 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 get, Kirk's getting a lot of attention, true. And, um, but my guess is... Why does Ducey get two I, bites well, of like, the apple? Let Chris finish. I don't know that Ducey gets two bites of the apple. I mean, you know, Kyle made very clear what his position was. But, you know, it could be Kirk Adams. It could be any number of handful of people. Matt Salmon, uh, David Schweiker. It could be anyone. And I, I just don't think they've reached that point yet of deciding. Okay, Grant, Grant, Klein. Grant, real, Eileen Klein. Okay, Grant, real quick, Grant Woods has exp expressed an interest, told me he's going to decide by the end of the year. He is still a registered Republican, by the way, but says he's going to run as a Democrat or Independent. Congressman Ruben Gallego on the Dem Democratic side, also interested. Will we'll either of them us. be on the ballot in November 2020? We should only be so lucky to have Ruben Gallego on the ballot running for the Senate in 2020. Yes. Yes. The answer to your question. Which one? Maybe both. Maybe both. All right, we've got to move on.